Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the bullpen. Yep, in the bullpen today, we have Aaron with National Director of Freedom Foundation. Aaron, good day, welcome. Rashad, thanks for having me on, appreciate it. Thank you for being on the program. Listen, I don't want to presume what you know or believe about mask, mask mandates, or even the COVID-19 vaccine. So give us some of your thoughts and your perspective as it relates to those. I think the first thing that we're seeing right now is the mandates that are that are being pushed in schools. I don't believe that kids should be forced to wear masks. I don't think that we should be forcing them to be taught at home or even having half days. I believe that kids should be in school full time. I think that they should be not forced to be wearing masks. If they choose to wear masks, that's absolutely their choice. If the teachers choose to get vaccinated, that's absolutely their choice. But we shouldn't be having these uh, broad mandates that affect a whole population of people. Let me ask you a few questions about that. So first, do you believe school boards, now typically anybody that passes a mask mandate for children, it is a localized school board empowered by the community of voters in that local area. Do you believe that school boards, one, actually have the legal authority to mandate mask for children? Yeah, I believe they do. Yeah, school school board school board should be the ones making these decisions, not uh, not governor's orders. So thank you for saying that. So let me tell you what's happening. <clears throat> school boards are saying we exercising our legal authority. We're saying that children need to have masks. Let me take it to Florida, for example. Right now you have seven school districts in Florida as of this morning that have mandated mask, okay? However, the governor of Florida created an executive order, not a statute, not a law, but an executive mm -hmm. order saying that these school boards cannot do what they are legally authorized to do, even based on your own commentary. So how mm -hmm. does that fly? When you have a school board exercising their legal authority, and then a governor banning them from exercising their legal authority. What say you to that? Rashad, this is probably one of the few issues we agree on. I think that all the executive orders coming out of any governor's office is completely wrong. It should be left to local school districts to make the decisions about what's best for their communities and their kids. I think that mandating mass coming from governor's offices is completely wrong. If schools if school districts want to do it, that's their prerogative. They have the rights and the ability to go and do it. And, and I don't believe in it personally. I don't think that kids should be forced to wear masks, but they absolutely have the authority to. I just don't think they should. This is really interesting because I, I dare say this, man. Your premise has significant intellectual integrity because you're saying you are. Why do you sound surprised when you say that? <laughs> because I have debated some folks on that other side, brother. <clears throat> Their intellectual integrity was out the door in the first one minute, okay? So right now yours is still intact. We'll see if that upholds throughout the entire debate. Um, so you're saying that yes, school boards do have the legal authority, which you're correct, they do. But you oppose it and I assume you oppose it based on you know, probably a, a, a very practical reason, maybe even a, an ethical reason as it relates to kids. But the issue is, and this has been an issue throughout uh, various Republican controlled states. The issue is these Republican governors are not simply allowing the local school board to make these decisions. Yeah, Rashad, as I mentioned, I think it's wrong that governors should have sweeping orders, but it works on the other side too. I live in yep. a liberal state, Washington state, and the West Coast has gone completely the opposite direction. We were framing teachers and nurses as heroes. You know, it's been both from the left and the right, we framed teachers and nurses as heroes for working through the pandemic. But now you have governors like Inslee in Washington state and throughout the West Coast that are going to fire nurses and teachers for not taking a vaccine, for making their own independent healthcare decisions. And Rashad, you know, these nurses know more than both me and you do, do about COVID. They've been in the nurses, they've been in the hospitals every single day fighting through this. They should, they know more than the governors do. They should be allowed to go and make their own healthcare decisions without the possibility of being fired. As it stands right now in Washington state, we're gonna fire tens of thousands of nurses and teachers for not do, uh, having a vaccine. Let me remind you of something because we're acting as if mandates for vaccinations are something new. As it stands now, every public high school and 
over 90% of private institutions require vaccinations, okay? They require them as a mandate for attendance. Those vaccinations include polio, tetanus, chickenpox, and a few other things, okay? That's common. <clears throat> if you're saying that mandates of the vaccination should be um, opposed based on some legal or ethical principle. Why do you not oppose the current vaccination mandates that are already present? This isn't a polio, Rashad. You know, this isn't. This doesn't have the spreadability of the chickenpox, or it doesn't have the uh, immortality of, of polio. We're talking about COVID, and let me tell you, at the start of the pandemic, we didn't know what this was going to be doing. We didn't know how it was going to affect kids. We didn't know uh, how widely spread and how deathly it was going to be. We've been in it for over 18 months now. We now know how. Um, how bad, how bad this can possibly get for people. And we found in kids especially, the, the mortality rate is significant. In fact, more kids died in 2019 of the flu than they did of COVID in 2020. Let's not downplay the death of any kid as, as anything less than a tragedy. But we have to come to a point in society where we weigh up what is the value of education, because these mm -hmm. kids aren't getting educated versus the potential risks of COVID. Okay, so Aaron, you're incorrect on the on the numbers as it relates uh, to the conclusiveness of COVID. <clears throat> Every medical scientist will tell you today, they cannot conclude how dangerous COVID will be because not only of the Delta variant, but other variants that coexist right now. We do know that the Delta variant is the primary variant where 95% of all new cases are connected to the Delta variant. That Delta variant is different than the original COVID design that we are accustomed to. That Delta variant is more spreadable and that Delta variant does impact children at a rate much more significant than the original COVID-19 virus. Let me take it to Alabama, for example. In Alabama, just this week alone, they have already hospitalized 50 children. States have gone uh, months without any children hospitalizations until the variant came. And now you're getting 50 to up to 200 in one week of uh, children being hospitalized when that was not the case um, under the original COVID-19 before the variant came. And let me also remind people of the severity of COVID-19. When you look at the flu, because a lot of people like to compare COVID to the flu, uh, not comparable. Um, the flu impacts um, about zero. 0.1% of the American population as far as death is concerned, okay? However, coronavirus has a death rate of one to 3% depending on that region. That is a significant number. And given the peak season of the flu, you have roughly 700 plus deaths during the peak season of one week of the flu, but 15,000, 25,000 deaths during the peak season of deaths for one week of COVID-19. The numbers, brother, are not comparable here as far as the carnage it creates in this country and beyond. Yeah, but we, we the vaccine, we've spoken about the vaccine. From everything that I've read on, on all sides of the, of the media, the vaccine is doing an effective job of keeping people um, out of hospitals and it's keeping the uh, stopping them from dying. So can, can we agree on that? Yes. Okay, so it's more effective have, than not having it, correct? Okay, yeah. So if we have the ability to go and get the vaccine, and we as a people see the information out there and go make our own individual decisions, right. people should be jumping on trains everywhere to go and get the vaccine, right? They should be able, going and making their their own decisions about what it is. But we were talking about kids in schools and uh, what's happening. Like I said, let's not downplay the death or the hospitalizations of any child as anything uh, less than a tragedy, right? But we as, as a society, uh, our education is failing them from top to bottom. We know who which kids are being affected by COVID. It's the ones primarily with underlying health conditions. It's the one that there are more. There are kids out there that are more susceptible to COVID. This should be the left and the right should unanimously unanimously be getting together and supporting school choice for all children now. Because if you have these kids that can't go into school because they have these underlying health conditions, we shouldn't be forcing them to. 
We should be giving them homeschool options. We should be giving them limited class size school options, but we're not doing that. We're, we have these blanket statements and orders coming out of primarily liberal governor's offices that affect the, the broad scope of our, of our kids. And it's yeah. all supported by the teachers unions. Okay, so let me, let me bring some things to your attention. Um, the US military, uh, that's a particular profession. You are mandated to receive certain vaccinations. Some people have to get up to 20, 20 plus vaccinations depending on their deployment. Uh, this has always been a reality. These things are mandated because you serve in a particular profession. Nurses also, um, they have to receive a certain number of vaccinations depending, uh, sometimes even depending on their assignment, even if they work overseas or domestically. School teachers. Um, they are mandated to take or have records of the same vaccinations as mandated for the children to have. So let me get this right. Teachers are already are mandated to be vaccinated. Nurses are already mandated to be vaccinated. Military officials are already mandated to be vaccinated. And if they do not obtain those vaccinations, they will be fired from their job. That is absolutely nothing new. So why is it new now that the potential of individuals, especially those who work in healthcare, uh, getting vaccinated or not getting vaccinated. Why is that an issue now when the vaccination mandate has already been a protocol established for decades in that profession? I answered this, this isn't polio and this doesn't have the spreadability of chicken pox. We know what COVID does, we know who it affects and we know the people that are more How do you know that it? when the scientists are saying they still don't know it because this thing is mutating at lightning speed and now you have not only what yeah multiple variants by the way you have a primary variant known as the delta variant or DeSantis variant and it could <laughs> be another variant all right so you can't say conclusively we already know to the extent that this virus will become or will be we don't we do. We know that the death rates amongst the kids. Scientists we know. Say no. We know. We know that younger people with no underlying health conditions are not susceptible to to dying or hospitalizations because of COVID. We know Let that. Let me address My wife that. Is, here's, no, no. Here's the issue. Here's the issue. Yeah. Our kids are not being educated. That's the problem. My wife is a public school teacher who hasn't seen a kid full time in school since April 2020. We as a society have to start educating our kids again. We have okay. to get them back. And listen, I agree with you on that educated. point. So, so let me give you let me give you some ideas and and some guidance on that. Okay, um, a mask is a protocol. Socially distancing is a protocol. It's a protocol for safety. All right. It's a protocol for in person learning. When you don't do these things, and children start getting hospitalized and they start having severe respiratory problems, and the virus continues to spread. Their parents have to take off from work. Their parents get COVID-19. Their parents go to work and give those individuals the COVID-19 variant, even though they have the vaccination. You see how it's all connected. All of this is connected. Now, the, the reality is that if you are a school teacher, brother, I was a high school teacher. I'm currently a college professor. Any teacher Thank can you. teach a young person with a mask on. That mask won't stop this education from happening. As a matter of fact, I know how to incorporate it into the lesson and curriculum that I am distributing to my young person in front of me. So a mask to a real teacher isn't anything. That is not a barrier to true education. Let me also remind people, we keep talking about they have, these young people have underlying health conditions. Well, number one, not all of them. It doesn't pan, the science doesn't pan out. Uh, many of them do, but not all of them. That's number one. Number two, it doesn't damn matter. It doesn't matter if a young person is walking around with some pre existing condition that they may or may not know about. None of that matters. They are still children inside of the school system and they deserve our protection, just as anyone else who does not have um, a pre existing condition. We don't know everyone who has a pre existing condition. They don't even know many times that they have some condition that may compromise because of COVID 19. So when we start playing this us and them game, with those who have pre-existing conditions, we almost act as if we should sacrifice them for the sake of those who would never catch COVID. And I say no, that is not how we work things in this country, at least not how we should work it. Because those with underlying conditions, brother, they are still part of our overall group of young people. So it doesn't yeah. matter. No, they are, we should absolutely be taking care of them. And you, you reiterated my own point is that we should have school choice for kids that, that are more susceptible to going out and getting COVID. So what if they don't hinder, know? We can't, hinder, we can't hinder the education of millions of students that based on. 
Thank you, thank you. We shouldn't be able to go and hinder these. And you talk about creating two sides of society, those that have underlying health conditions and those that don't. That's exactly what we're doing with vaccines. But that's not, listen to me, brother. When you decide to ignore the protocols, and this is already happening, that's why seven school districts are in opposition to a law. They are willing to lose their own funding and their paycheck because the governor of Florida has said that he would take the money away. They have made a decision to stand adversarial to the executive order in that state. You have school systems, Clayton County and Georgia and others around the country, they're already closing up again. You know why they're closing up? Because of the spread of the COVID variant. If you do not practice your protocol, then you actually work against the goal that you're saying on my show. Because if you're saying the goal is to return to in person education and to make sure that in person education is the cornerstone for, for um, American education, then ignoring the protocols shuts the school down. Ignoring the protocols gives your increase COVID-19 cases. Ignoring the protocols causes parents to take off from work. Listening to the protocols based on all scientific research decreases the spread of COVID-19 between 40 to 60%. Brother, that's something. All right, I don't agree with everything you said, but let's just assume that everything that you said is correct. Okay. Why? Can Obama have a birthday party with hundreds of guests, or I can go to a football game today with no mask, with thousands of people in the crowds, but our kids can't wear, can't take their masks off in schools. If this thing is question. so, if this no, if this thing is so deadly, if this thing is so deadly, then why are people making these decisions? They shouldn't be, right? But this it me isn't that bad. Go ahead. Let me answer that question. We're, we're running out of time, but I want to answer that question because I think it's a fair question. But the reason why you can do things that your children cannot do is because you're grown and they're children. The reason oh, why parents can make, you can parents wear, can make the decisions hold on, for their brother, kids. Come on, Rashad. That's brother, a listen out. to me. Listen to my full answer here. There are dress codes in school systems that you don't have to follow as a parent, but your your school children do. Those dress codes are there for them, not for you. And it doesn't matter if you disagree with the dress code. If the skirt is too short, that's a no-no inside of the school system. Okay, if the t-shirt is vulgar, that's a no-no inside of the school system. You can wear that clothing, you can wear that clothing all day. But there are different rules for our children in order to protect them and keep them safe. We have always established that in the United States of America. And all of a sudden we want to abandon that, that centuries long ideology that says we do things in this country as adults for children to protect them that we ourselves may engage in differently. We can smoke, we can drink alcohol, all that's legal for grown people to do. That's not legal for children to do. So if you're telling me that children should be able to do everything that adults can do, have some intellectual intellectual integrity all the way through and say they can do whatever adults can do. Rashad, come on, I'm not going to say, it's like saying that a kid should be forced to, to go and drink alcohol. But parents make independent decisions for their own Do you own think a kids. child, if they wanted just, to drink alcohol, they should? No, Okay. No, I'm not saying- And you I'm do not think saying, there should be laws against it, correct? Yes, yeah, we're talking about alcohol abuse, absolutely. Because Why are abuse? there laws against children drinking alcohol, why? Because we have a proven science that says that 12 year olds that start drinking alcohol can, can go on and have future problems and their minds aren't- And we have a proven damn science that if you wear a mask, more people live. No, we don't, not amongst kids. We've, this is the we know. that we've Listen, had. brother, mask mandates decrease COVID. We know that, that's the science, that's the science. What are you gonna wait for? You're gonna wait for this variant? To start actually killing children all across the country, then change your mind. Wait, it's already we've been, hospitalizing we've been waiting children. over 18 listen, months. These kids brother, haven't been in school for 18 months. There has brother, to be a point in society. I, listen, that's why I say follow the around. protocol. But you realize yeah. children are being hospitalized at a record rate. Alabama doesn't even have any ICU beds anymore. You have so many children being hospitalized. Come on, man. We have a, we have to get to a point in society where we weigh up the potential risks of COVID 
versus the the uh, what our education needs to be. That's what we need to start doing. School choice is one of the ways that we can go and do that. We need to allow kids to go and make their own. Listen, if you're a parent in Florida right now and your kid is not allowed to wear a mask in school, which actually they are allowed, but everyone isn't being forced to be and you aren't comfortable with that, you should be able to go and off to another school or homeschool your kids or, or do whatever you want. Equally in Washington state where they're being forced to wear masks, you should be able to take your kid out of that school if you don't want them to. And go and take them into a school that does allow them to go and do that. All right, do you wear a seatbelt? Yeah, I wear a seatbelt. You agree with seatbelt laws? I, <laughs> I agree that people should be allowed to go make their own independent decisions. I believe that parents agree, should go. Do you agree with seatbelt laws? No. Okay. I don't. Just I don't, so you I, understand. I, I, but, I, but I follow them and I agree with them because they were passed by a legislative process. Okay, school board is a legislative body. Mm -hmm. uh, we, did, we didn't argue, I, I agreed with you when I said that school boards are allowed to make these decisions. Okay. I just don't think they're the right ones. So let's look at the logic of you wearing a seatbelt. Before seatbelt mandates were in place, people could voluntarily wear a seatbelt or not, okay? You know how many people wore seatbelts? About 30% of the population. You know a lot of people died because they did not wear a seatbelt. In 1981, it was still legal to drink and drive. You did not have DUI laws on the books before 1981. You know what happened once they put DUI laws on the books? Less people started driving drunk, less people died. Mortal, uh, the death rate decreased, okay? So, and Rashad, I'm talking don't, about don't per, compare wearing a seatbelt to drink driving. That, that's complete. Listen, brother, I'm, that's I'm BS, telling you, you know that. I'm, I'm comparing how mandates actually work in societal constructs. Mandate driving is different than wearing a seatbelt. People Sir, made their own the independent is, decisions to go wear a seatbelt. Brother, it is a legal mandate to wear a seatbelt. It's a legal mandate to wear a seatbelt because of the safety. The safety is so outweighed by your uh, from your independent decision. Like you may not want to wear a seatbelt, but seatbelts save lives, and so we weigh that and we say, okay. The fact that you could survive an accident with a greater chance, a greater rate of survival success. We're gonna mandate that you wear a seatbelt. You're okay with that mandate in your adult life. Why would you not give children that same opportunity with a mask? With a mask a mandate in that system until we get this thing under control, brother. A seatbelt is not the same as wearing a mask. <sighs> You're putting something over your face. And also, where does You're it You're putting stop? something over well, your body. Rashad, Rashad. Rashad, it's safer that kids stay at home all day, right? And get taught, taught uh, from, uh, from a computer screen. That's safer, right? Are we gonna mandate that? It's ridiculous. Brother, we have to get to a point have where we weigh up these options. No, listen, no, come on, man, I, let, I Aaron, let you speak, I let you speak. Aaron, I, I got let one me, minute. Me. I just wanna say you can have in-class instruction and mask and learning. All of that can happen at the same time. My point is, where does it stop? My point is, where does it stop? Well, Are we you gonna get mandate what about is get taught at home for another year? Yeah, uh, as long as it takes until we get control of this thing. Brother, it has been fun. My producers are telling me to wrap it up. Uh, Aaron, I'm glad to have you on the show, man. Thank you for coming on the bullpen. Thanks, Sean, appreciate it.